Talking more about the budget um, and the, the cuts, um, what specifically do you see, would you cut um, going into this uh, next yeah. year? Well, let me, let me flip it for a second and talk about what I don't want to cut. I'm not, don't want to cut anything in regards to, to, to crime and fighting crime. You know, or policemen, uh, or um, uh, things like the Weed and Seed program. Think we have made tremendous progress in crime. Let's not back up on that. So I've tried to be pretty hard line there. I also don't want to cut any more economic development. Okay, this is what's caught us in a situation where, where the city is the the business is, is turning, but the city hadn't caught up with it yet, and it's not able to uh, uh, to. to uh, provide the services we need and, and uh, get the revenue in a lot quicker. Besides that, everything is, for me, is going to be looked at very closely. Um, I'm not going to be a person that c cuts across the board. Uh, that's bad management. Nobody needs to hire a, a mayor that says, okay, we're just going to be democratic and cut 10% across. I mean, you're supposed to have a brain and you have to figure out strategically what is really necessary in the next uh, three to four years what is, uh, is not as much. And sometimes the things that people say, well, that's just soft stuff, is really cost you money if you, if you cut. So, you know, making those judgments is, is going to be critical. So the answer to your question is, uh, is most everything is going to be cut, and we're going to have to do it in the right way at different levels. Are there, are there any, is there anything in, uh, uh, specifically that you see inefficiencies in as far as some of the programs and, and, and things we have? Yeah, I do. I, I mean, I learned this at the park level. I mean, there's a great deal of opportunity to privatize things. Uh, uh, we've tested privatization of our of our parks. A maintenance, for instance, in far north Dallas has worked out very well. We have people, sometimes city employees, driving all over the city a long time, spending more time driving than mowing. And, you know, when you start to privatize those in smaller groups, uh, that that saves you money, uh, and I think there's uh, making sure that we're uh, smart in purchasing, uh, you know, being more uh, technology friendly, uh, uh, you know, less paper. We've already done a lot of those things. So there's small things. I'm confident that the city manager and her assistant city managers will work through some of those small things. What they're going to need our help with is the strategic issues that we face. And, and so they've got to kind of show us those, uh, what I call Sophie's choices that we're all going to make, that nobody wants to make, all right? You know, and we're going to have to say, well, look, that's going to hurt us long term if we cut that. We're going to have to help them there. I mean, you're elected mayor. You're one guy. Mm -hmm. The city manager has been down there for how many years now? Yep. I mean, I'm, and she, you know, by all accounts, appears to know what she's doing. She does. And I would assume if she knew there were inefficiencies, or she certainly would be looking for inefficiencies, she's apparently not found that many. Mm -hmm. How are you going to manage to find all this stuff? Well, I think one of the things that I've had experience in, in working with businesses is that you get so inside your business You've never looked at it a different way. And I think this is true with, uh, with Mary as well. And she's admitted it. I mean, I've asked her questions, and she said, we, uh, no one's ever asked that question before. No one's ever asked that question in the, all my time. And it's not that she's, she's a very bright lady. But I think having fresh set of eyes is important. Now, Mayor, let's say, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, the second thing to me is let's define operational success. What does success look like? And, and I think for her, success is making the city council happy. I mean, you know, she wants to make sure the city council is happy. We're going to have to say it's not about the city council being happy. It's about the citizens being happy. And what does success look like there? And then, and then have someone that, like myself who has been through the process reengineering process and understand where efficiencies are in, in, in these things. How many middle management do you need? How many frontline people do you need? Those experiences and uh, being inside city government for a long time, I, I know this probably surprises a lot of folks, but the, usually government is not the most innovative in, 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 in kind of front uh, um, uh, moving forward with uh, re-engineering and things like that. So I think we can help her uh, through that and I'm looking forward to partnering with her.
I was just going to say, Mayor Leppard was also kind of a business mayor. He mm -hmm. came from a private sector. Yep. You're going to find a bunch of stuff he didn't find then in the four years he was there? You know, our, our objectives might be a little different. Tom and I are, are different people. Uh, he was very smart. Um, I'm uh, um, a person that uh, loves the thought of, uh, of uh, digging into something and doing something in a more creative fashion. I come from a background of uh, running an advertising agency where we were constantly doing creative stuff. He was more in a construction world where it's a little bit more linear. So I think my uh, creativity uh, lends itself to, to, to this sort of challenge. That's what we did with homeless effort. I mean, there was no money on the table, and uh, we were able to um, uh, build a, um, uh, a homeless assistance center, get the, the citizens to pass that. No one ever thought that the citizens of Dallas would take care of the homeless. We've got a big heart in this town. And then we were able to take $3.5 million and double it, that, that the city gave, and double it with private and non-city money. We were able to leverage that sort of thing by creating a public-private partnership, by really privatizing the homeless effort. That's what we did with the zoo uh, when I was there at the park board. So, you know, making sure that the, the, the zoo, uh, because people will give money to the zoo all the time when they realize they're not giving it to government. If they're giving it to government, they don't want to give it to government. So I think those sort of things, and, and we're seeing more and more success there, and that's what I'll continue to push. So less construction, no hotels? Tollways, there, in the next four years, I don't think we've got a lot of money for that. I mean, we, we've got to clean up our, I mean, continue to, to institute and implement our bond election. The last one, we've got to tee up a new bond election and, and understand what infrastructure we need. We need to fill the potholes. We need to focus on um, economic development. We've got to focus on schools. So all those big ticket projects are going to be put on hold for quite a while then? Well, I don't think there are any big ticket items uh, right now going on. I mean, they're, they're, we've, we've got the plans for the bridges, and those things are kind of financed, and we're moving ahead with those. Uh, and uh, we're going to shore up the levees in the Trinity River uh, to make sure that that's safe. A lot of the, the money at the, in, inside the Trinity River is private money that will be used. And so those things are kind of budgeted. There's nothing teed up right now from a a big capital expense that'll be something like the convention hotel. Now the we need to digest that stuff. I so mean, the Rangers lease in Arlington's up in eight years. Nah, I think it's uh, twelve years or eleven years. Is it eight? I think it's eight. It's eight. You it's may eight. be right. I looked at. It. I thought it was. I uh, think to get one of those things going, you'd have yeah. to start in sometime in your term if you're elected. Uh, yeah, might, but uh, uh, good idea or yeah. not, I guess. You know, I, I let me let me tell you the way I'm going to be on, on those things. Uh, the screen I'm going to look at is what's good for business for Dallas. I'm going to look at every deal, and I'm going to fight hard for, for making sure that, uh, yes, I want the region to grow, but I want to make sure that people know they can do better business in, in Dallas, um, whether it's in Arlington or Irving or Plano or wherever it is. I'm going to be fighting for everything that's up. Uh, you talked a little bit earlier about the southern sector and growing mm -hmm. that area. Um, what are some of the untapped resources there that um, you can point out? Well, well I the, the the biggest one is space. Uh, when I realized that you could fit the city of Atlanta <coughs> inside the southern sector, I went, oh, "This is it. This is our growth opportunity right now." It is 60%, nearly 60% 60, 60 of the land mass, and it's 15% of the tax base. So North Dallas is burden, is it got all the burden of the tax base because we're not growing in our, our opportunity. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about six key beachheads in the southern sector that are already out there, that are already finding success. We're not talking about greenfield projects that need the right sort of leadership and partnership with them and uh, just a, a little focus and a little effort, I think that the southern sector will start to get close to that tipping point is like, down, uh, like the downtown is. You know, the Inland Port was a big deal for a while and those guys have run into some economic yes. problems, but their gripe, as I recall it, when they were flush, or at least it appeared they were flush, was that South Dallas politicians were basically pulling them down with you know, begging for jobs, asking for money. Yep. I mean, doing the stuff that 
is not going to work. Yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy theory there. I mean, uh, the, theory the, or the, fact? The, uh, well, I I wasn't the reporter in that, but there's a lot of uh, you know folks uh, talking about uh, folks all over the place. Well, you've worked with those guys. Uh, I mean, is that a problem there or not? I haven't worked with the uh, the landowners of. Uh, I was, of I was the talking to the politicians. But the politicians, <laughs> you know, I find um, the uh, the folks that I have worked with being straightforward with me, being very passionate about their agenda items, um, and those are two things that are important to me: being being very frank and being very passionate. Um, they have not seen plans that have have truly come to pass. They've just there's been a lot of talk and not much action. I mean, even the inland port, uh, the guy you were talking about is he, he went bankrupt. Okay, he's in bankruptcy now, and so we need to get that land out of bankruptcy. So I, I appreciate their their skepticism from time to time. Uh, and also, it shouldn't be the plantation mentality. We shouldn't be kind of looking and say, what can we do for that? This is not about us doing something for, for them. This is about us doing something for us, all together, because this is what's right for Dallas, and uh, we've got to all be together as we, uh, as we uh, deal with that issue. Uh, are we going to have different political points of view? Yes. But as long as we get the issues on the table, air them in a, in a positive way, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll power through it, I think. I was going to say Redbird Mall. At, at one point, and I'm not even sure if the city still owns the old Sears building or whatever. Yeah. I don't, do you know? South, or, uh, the, it's called Southwest Mall. Southwest Mall. And uh, that is one of the conundrums that we've got. It's, a, it's an up and active mall. It was close to being shut down. Uh, I think we kept the power on. And, and I uh, was over there the other day. And... There are uh, uh, dozens and dozens of retailers providing the services they need. Um, is it the mall that we all think of as a state of the art? No. So we've got to work with uh, the community. We've got to work with developers and say, what's the right thing to do with that mall? But that mall, to me, is, is, is within some areas that are just hot and heavy, that are growing great. So that's a, that's a little bit of a tougher one. But what has happened in, in Bishop Arts through, uh, down uh, through Jefferson, what is, uh, is happening when that bridge opens in West Dallas, what's happening with Pinnacle Park all the way down to, uh, uh, through the DBU campus and Mountain Creek. Uh, I don't know if anybody, anybody's not been, any of your viewers not been to Mountain Creek in, in, in far southwest, the most beautiful part of Dallas. Um, it's fabulous. Uh, there's places where 35 and 20 connect, uh, far southwest Oak Cliff, uh, is vibrant with homes and great churches. And um, wherever I see a Walgreens come in, I know things are starting to happen. You see those things uh, taking place. So there's, there's uh, little fires happening. Our job is going to, uh, to fan them and kind of spread that tax base so, so everybody can uh, uh, kind of have the growth they want. No, last question for me. I, mean, I think it was about a year ago we did a story on what would a neighborhood do if the city gave them $100 million in revenue bonds. So if we took the money that was going to the convention center hotel and we split it up into different neighborhoods and we built a small parking garage, revenue bond generated, in next to Bishop Arts. Or mm -hmm. we did it over in Henderson where there was activity but no parking. Mm -hmm. It didn't go anywhere because it was a theory and the money was already being spent on the convention center hotel anyway. Is that the kind of thing that the city could be doing to spark some of the fires, or is that going I think to so. I think we need a little bit of that. There's no question about it. Uh, to me, I want to come back to what is the strongest thing that creates strong neighborhoods, and that's schools. I mean, if we all get behind our schools and demand that they are superior, uh, those, those neighborhoods are going to take, take place, and, and, and it's, it's going to grow. So that's where I would like to make sure that our focus is and in building our neighborhoods. We've got great park system. We've got a fabulous park system. Uh, I think we've got we, we've got a good right-of-ways and good uh, transportation. We've got, we got a lot of potholes, <laughs> but we got to get those potholes fixed. So, anyway. So, so um, 
I guess we'll end on, a, you know, what, what specifically distinguishes you from the other candidates? It seems like, you know, nobody wants to raise taxes, everybody's all for the neighborhoods and that kind of thing. Um, what sets you apart? You know, I, I'm not sure um, there's a lot of specific policy issues that differentiate. If you listen to some of our debates, you hear, so I've heard that, I've heard that, I've heard that, I've heard that. I think there are two things we need to consider. Uh, one is what experience do you bring to the job? What type of experience do you, this is a uh, ninth city in, in a ninth largest city in the country. Do we have a leader that can wrestle top ten city issues down to the ground? Do, is, is someone experienced in doing that? Is the first question. Second is do they have the vision and the attitude that this city wants? Does it match them? I am unabashed, want to put the big back into big D. I just believe in it. I believe that's in our DNA. That's in the makeup of the people. That's when we do things that way, we go places. The neighborhoods are improved. We bring people in. Everything happens. I'm a can-do person from a, 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 you know, I just believed it when I first came here to town. And uh, it's ultimately going to be that. It's going to be, it's going to be, do you have the, the experience to, to deal with these complicated issues and lead organizations that are complex? And second, do they have the vision and the attitude to take us where we need to go? Okay, well, um, I think we'll leave it there. Great, um, thank you. Thanks for joining us.